Hello, everyone. Yeah, my name is David, Deputy New College Head Office, and thank you for joining our webinar uh, regarding the 2022 OCE placement test information. Yes, yes uh, getting to the OC will be the very challenging goal for our students, and to be able to succeed, yeah, we should be aware of all the uh, latest information about the exam. So uh, during this webinar, I'd like to share the information about the OC placement test process and information about the test like test format, and score calculation, and most of all, uh, how to prepare for the test. Uh, I also invited uh, Ms. Kelly Jones uh, to join the webinar. So uh, she will deliver more detailed information about the uh, test, especially English component, reading test. So she will join later after the finishing her HSC marking. Okay. okay, thank you. Yep, so can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Yeah, we got tips of the audience tonight, yeah, over 700. Thank you very much. Okay, let's get started then. Okay, uh, we have many, many new years reparents this term. And uh, thank you for uh, all your continuous support throughout this term. And so we have just three weeks remaining before the uh, end of term. And uh, just a reminder, uh, we have an annual scholarship test for ES3 students that will be held on uh, week 10, Sunday, next Sunday, uh, 12th of December. So uh, it will be online test format. And all successful students will get a, a scholarship discount offer for next year's WMT studies at Field New College. So, uh, due to the limited capacity for the online test, uh, we may need to close the booking by uh, this Saturday. So, if you haven't registered, uh, I recommend you to register uh, by this Saturday. Thank you. Okay, so the OC, uh, this stands for Opportunity Class, which is the Special Education Program in New South Wales. And uh, we have 75 OCE classes, uh, public schools. So 75 uh, New South Wales public schools who uh, operate a special OC. And uh, the aim for the OC is to catering for the academically gifted students and they will study together for the two years next to two years for year five and year six yeah, which is quite special a gifted and talented program in new south wales and uh, these classes help students to learn uh, high uh, specially designed teaching method and they will provide educational material which is appropriate for the gmt education so as a result, OC students, uh, generally speaking, OC students uh, outperform well in their future uh, selection tests, like select for high school placement tests, and also the uh, independent school scholarship tests. Many, many successful stories from the OC students. So getting into the OC uh, is a very good goal to set for our ES3 students. So due to the high demand for the OC, every year a large number of students apply and set the exam. So this slide shows the total number of available places for the OC, which is 1,870 tested available places. And every year, this is last year's uh, total number of applicants, over 14,000. And the recent test has been held in November 17th. I guess it would be more than 15,000 this year. Yeah. Very, very competitive exam. Yes. So to get into OC prices, uh, our students should reach at least top 13% from the older uh, candidate. Yeah. That means yeah, without the preparation, it's going to be very hard to get in. 
based on the entry score, uh, these are top 10 uh, OOC schools. So uh, as you can see, the big crop, the public school, always, you know, for the last three years, they are the number one. And then followed by uh, Matthew Pierce in Bochum Hills, North Rocks, Ermington, Euro, Ride, Summer Hill, and then Cheswood Public School, Akamon, Iron Bark, Rich Public School, followed by Waitara Public School, and Neutral Bay. Alstonville, Quakers Hill, yeah, they are very popular uh, OC schools. So, <clears throat> so when students achieve around over 75% in the exam, uh, we can say that they will have a good chance to get in um, these top OC schools. Yes. For current year three students, uh, their exam date will be uh, July 28th, which is Thursday, and second week of term three, next year term three, second week. That's the exam date. So uh, we have now less than eight months, seven months, 27 days and remaining for the exam preparation. So we need to make use of these eight months preparation period well and, and well organized man. So next year, April, uh, usually uh, yeah, this year it was in 28th of April. So late April, and uh, the high performing student unit will uh, open the online application website. Once it's been open, uh, you will need to register and then complete the online application. Yes. So once you complete the application, you can communicate uh, through this uh, special website uh, for any request or any reply from the high performance field unit any request for the change of school choice, and any relevant information or document you need to submit, you can just use this special portal website and to uh, complete your application. And also they will notify you through the website about the test instruction and also the test outcome in October. Yeah. So, we can find out the outcome in October. Yeah, that's the main timeline for the students uh, when they apply for the OC yeah, next year. Yes. Okay. yes, there are many, many uh, questions in the chat box. Uh, I will go through all the questions after this presentation and I will answer as many questions as possible. So just use the chat box to inquire any question. Okay, so as you can see, uh, this is the application procedure that will start from April next year. And as I already explained, yeah, you, you, you need to register the application website using your email and then log into the website and complete your application online. There is no paper application. Okay, so as you may be aware, there are a lot of changes in OC, also the selective school placement test as well. Yeah. So from uh, this year, uh, all the OC test questions will be uh, designed and delivered by Cambridge Assessment, which is a UK-based uh, test assessment uh, provider. And um, also another change is that the test format, which is uh, they are moving to from the paper-based to online 
computer-based uh, test format. So they already uh, implemented the first computer-based test for this year's OC exam. Yeah. That was happening uh, in the last two weeks ago, in September of November. So next year, the OC exam will be also a computer-based test. So they will use the computer and do the test online. It's, it's the, the big changes. It's, So the official uh, new OC exam format is looks like this. There are three sections, reading, mathematical reasoning, and thinking skills. So they will attempt three sections, and the reading test contains 25 questions, and they need to finish by inserting this. All are multiple choices. And mathematical reasoning test uh, will be 40 minutes quest, uh, test and it contains 35 questions. Thinking skill, yeah. 30 minutes and 30, yeah. 30 questioning, 30 minutes. Yeah. So all are multiple choices. As you can see, the time frame looks very yeah, uncomfortable to finish. Yeah. Yeah. Especially mathematical reasoning, there are one more option A, B, C, D. And E, five inches. Okay. So after the exam, uh, the unit will calculate your child's placement score. They will decide whether your child is eligible to get in or not. It will be based on the placement score. So the maximum placement score will be out of 120 marks. So 100 from the test and 20 marks from your child's school principal. Yes. So, so once you uh, submit the application, uh, the school principal will process your application and they will assess your child's English and math mark at the school environment and they will give 10 marks out of 10 marks for English and out of 10 marks for the math. And it will be included in the placement score. So total 120, that's the maximum score. So this pie graph shows the relative weighting of each test component and also the portion of the school mark. <coughs> so <coughs> the school mark will be just 16% of the total mark. And 84% will be the totally based on the student's exam performance. So even you got your child got a good school mark, it's not enough. The actual test performance on the exam day will most likely decide the child's outcome. So exam is very crucial part. Getting the high mark in the exam. Yeah. So this year's OC exam was held on the 70th of November. And right after the exam, uh, we collect all the information about the new test questions appeared in this year's exam. So we got heaps of uh, detailed information about the test question. Almost every test question they did on the exam day. And also lots of feedback about our uh, OC preparation course. So in general, our students said um, this year's OC test was medium to easy level in terms of the difficulty. And they said the special mathematical reasoning test was very easy for them. Yeah. The only problem was the reading test. They said reading test was the hardest test because of the time limit and also amount of text they need to read and digest. So the improving the reading skill is quite crucial part yeah, for the OC preparation. Yes. Thinking skills, students said the test level for the thinking skill was fairly accurate 
compared to the actual exam, the, our OC trial test, thinking speak question, nearly the same level, uh, very familiar, not a new question types. So they could uh, prepare well, and I think there was no issue with thinking skills with our year four students this year. So I'm quite sure uh, this year's OC outcome will be very good. Yeah. So I'm quite pleased to hear that. So <clears throat> taking the OC trial test and WMT course is very helpful. Yeah, I'm quite confident to recommend our uh, OC preparation course. Yes. Yeah. So many, many parents are asking whether they can have a look at the actual uh, test question uh, they did, our uh, year student did recently. So we prepared a special the clone test for our ESV parents, students to try. It's available now on cyber school. So just let your child to give the uh, opportunity to try this year's OC test question. It will be total 50 question and it will be it's one hour limit. So it's almost the same question. So please check the test question and find out how many questions your child can get it, can get correct yeah? and get a better idea about the question style in the real OC exam. So it's available tonight. So after this webinar, yeah, make it a quiet place for your child and let them to try. So uh, you need to log into the cyber school and you uh, on the my test menu, you will see the 2021 OC clone test menu. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, just go go to that menu and then click start button and do the test. After the test, you can re revise or just check the test results and also you can uh, review all, all the question again, or even you can try again yeah, with the same 60 minutes time limit. Yeah, so it's available now. Uh, also, I'd like to mention about our new reading 310 uh, online course, which is free to our year three students. Okay? This is all about reading skills, improving the reading comprehension skills. Yeah, total 310 questions is available and your child can try uh, all the uh, 10 set of reading questions that cover all the required knowledge in, in comprehension skills. Yeah. Short passage and gap text, gap text and multiple matching text. They are the main uh, question type in the OC exam. So please uh, make sure your child complete all the reading through 10 course as well. It's quite recommendable. Okay, so from new year, uh, we will focus on OC exam. And through the WMT and OC trial test course, and also we have a big summer holiday course, intensive course uh, from 10th of January, and uh, your child can attend our uh, holiday course daily basis. And also cyber school will be uploading lots of new resources and services and your child should use uh, cyber school services from WMT studies. There are many, many activities they, they need to do on a weekly basis and complete all the homework questions and quizzes. So all are very, very uh, important to make sure your child is ready for the exam by uh, July. Especially year for WMT, yeah, we will start from summer holiday course and it will cover all major uh, essential topics for the exam, writing, reading, mathematical reasoning and thinking skills. And we need to build a strong foundation with advanced curricula. Yeah. So it's, it's like a, a more uh, in-depth in the curriculum in all these uh, components. 
And OC trial test course will start uh, in term one yeah, from 22nd of January. And it will provide your child with all the uh, question that will be appeared in the real exam. Very similar style of the question in reading, mathematical reasoning, and thinking skills. Uh, it will provide the same, exactly the same test format and test environment so that uh, they can be familiarized with the new uh, computer-based test conditions. So they will use computer device and do the trial test every week, and they will uh, learn time management skill and avoid any silly mistakes, increase the speed and accuracy, and finally, they feel very confident on the exam day. So OC trial test courses very important course for students who are aiming for the OC placement. Yes. So from term one next year until the exam during seven months, uh, we can provide maximum uh, 34 test sets. So uh, yeah, please enroll early and get the feedback and get more consultation from us about your child's progress. Okay, so as I mentioned before, the most critical part was reading test. And so we need to uh, put more focus on reading skills. And to do that, yeah, I invited Ms. Kelly Jones, and she will provide very valuable information about how to prepare for the reading test, what the test question looks like, and what is the important point to focus on during the uh, preparation period. Hi, Kelly, are you ready? Hello, yes, I am. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, thank you for joining uh, tonight's webinar. And okay, you can start, Kelly. Yeah. Okay, thank you, David. Thank you, everybody, um, for being here today. So, my name is Kelly, and I am an English teacher. I've been working in curriculum development and consultancy for many, many years now. And I'm just going to take you briefly through some of the changes that we're seeing in the OC uh, test and also the selective test. And um, these changes are actually reflected right through to the HSC. Um, so I'll talk to you about those changes today. Why? they've come about a little bit and then also give some tips and tricks around how you um, and your student or your, sorry, your child, our student, can best prepare for the reading um, parts of those tests. So in today's session, I'll probably talk for around 30 minutes. Feel free to take notes down as we go. Uh, we'll look at an overview of just the basic reading comprehension skills that appear in all uh, aspects or sections of the test. Talk about the new gapped and multiple matching sections. Uh, go a little bit into detail around the types of reading comprehension questions that you can expect to find and then how students can best manage the test time because as we know, the test is a test in itself. Um, being able to manage their time and their thinking and anxiety uh, under pressure is a whole set of skills uh, aside from the reading, the thinking and the maths that they need to bring with them. So just take a look at the list of reading comprehension skills here. Most of them you'd be familiar with and the students would be familiar with. It's very important to know what each of these mean. Because under test conditions, we are, of course, um, under time pressure, it's really critical that you're able to quickly find the correct information or what we call discern, which means decide between similar answers and decide or discern what is most correct in a very short space of time. If you know the type of question and what it's asking you very specifically, then your chance of getting it correct is much better. 
So we've got some questions there, or oh, sorry, skills around like finding main ideas. These are broad reading comprehension skills, making predictions, summarizing, um, looking at the purpose of the text overall. And then there's much more pointed questions, which might be recalling a specific fact or detail, uh, finding the definition or the meaning of a word in the context of that extract, um, explaining or knowing what an example of figurative language is, what the technique is or what its purpose is, for example. So these skills, um, yeah, some of them are very broad and some are more specific. And as I said, knowing what you're looking for means you can answer the correct answer um, much quicker. So firstly, I'll just talk about the gapped text questions. This is essentially uh, like your traditional closed passage. I'll show you an example in a moment. The texts, as we've seen them for OC and selective, and actually even in the HSC marking, which I'm doing at the moment, is uh, you, they're usually around like four, five, six hundred words. So they're not very long, one page. Um, but the density of the text, the vocabulary, the uh, com you know sophistication of the content, can make them more or less challenging to read. So six sentences are removed and then there's seven options and students are required to basically put the correct sentence uh, in the correct gap. The role of these has been to test um, a student's ability to think and put information together themselves uh, using information from the text, but then also drawing on their own general knowledge and their ability to think outside of the text and collaborate all of this information at once. The reason that the department has moved away from um, other types of questions is because this is, you know, targeting gifted and talented students. So it's really trying to differentiate between students who simply can remember or memorize a lot of facts as opposed to students who can really think critically and creatively about things. So that's the difference. Um, this makes it more fair. It actually makes it more fair and equitable for everybody because it means that uh, students from all backgrounds, all socioeconomic um, or educational backgrounds, are beginning on an even playing field. There's no way that you can be, um, you know, privileged against someone else. The, the way that you can prepare is through uh, reading, getting your reading skills better, but then also practicing the test, which is uh, what pre-uni provides as well. Uh, so the skills in this gap, gap text really focus on the context. That means, you know, understanding how information fits into a paragraph. That might be a whole sentence. It is a whole sentence. But the students are looking for key words. They're looking for what precedes and what comes after those gaps. They are looking at being able to skim and scan text and make predictions, make assumptions, and look at topic sentences evaluate the structure of the text and know what might fit in where. So there's a lot of um, juggling of thoughts that happens at once with this section. This is an example on your screen, Drumming Cockatoos, and you can see that it's it's about one page. I mean, that's, um, I think, one and a half or double spacing. They do that just for ease of readership. And then in the box, we have A through to G options. So there's a few different strategies students can use to approach the gapped section. They could, for example, read the text in its entirety first and then read the options in the box. Uh, the other option, which I more often recommend, is to read the options first, so the A, B, C, Ds through to G, and then come back to the text um, this gives you more of a chance to see key words, key verbs, key ideas that might be more easily matched with those gaps. 
Of course, we go through the process with the students of learning how to skim and scan the text. So that's very quickly looking at the heading, drumming cockatoos, looking at the picture, seeing the red palm cockatoo there, um, scanning through the topic sentences, being aware, being alert of, of key words, key ideas, uh, deciding what the purpose of the text is, for example, if it is entertaining, persuasive or informative, um, asking whom the target audience might be, if there's a particular age group or cultural group or gender even. Uh, all of these skills that can happen in moments once students become very professional at using them allow you or allow the student to be able to rapidly get through um, a longer text and then accurately fill in the gaps. I find problems or students always um, express, I suppose, that they run out of time or they feel that um, the text is too long, I'm having to rush, I didn't get time to look at the details, I was guessing. These are some of the common sort of challenges that students face. So learning how to sharpen those reading skills means you become a more efficient reader. The second type of uh, text in the test that the Department of Education has included now is multiple matching. So this is another reading comprehension test, of course. It's where we're looking for information in other words or paraphrased. Um, so here we really depend on, yes, reading skills, uh, specifically context, vocabulary, having a broad vocabulary uh, allows you to be able to use a lot of synonyms or antonyms and make predictions and assumptions, which I've said are gifted, uh, the Gifted and Talented program is, is looking at, um, you know, targeting. <clears throat> Excuse me. So a ma multiple matching text has um, a topic or a theme. There will be four extracts uh, all based on that topic or that theme. Again, there's somewhere between like five, six, up to 800 words, depending on the sophistication level of the text. And then there are eight clues or prompts that the students uh, have to work with. Again, they've been included for the same reasons I spoke about with the uh, gap text. It's to uh, test skills, thinking skills, reading thinking skills. Yes, I'm saying thinking skills, but not that section. I mean, it's all related anyway, the way our brain processes and um, collaborates information at once. And it does make it more equal and an even playing field for all students sitting um, an OC test or another gifted and talented test. For multiple matching, we, as I said, are looking for clues or paraphrased information. Some of this information could be what we call explicit, so that's very direct. You can see the answer. It's right there on the page. It's literal. It can also be figurative, so that's using um, yeah, figurative language or extended metaphors all the poetry and figurative techniques that your students and and you know. And then also as a higher order skill, it's looking at implied information and inferential information. So this is where having a broad general knowledge is an advantage because it means you're able to draw on information and knowledge from outside of the test to be able to firmly um, select the correct answers. I know you can't see this clearly, but just for the sake of structure, have a look at this sample. It's on the Department of Education website if you want to take a closer look. It's one of the samples from the OC test. So this uh, multiple matching section is all about the topic of the C. Extracts A, B, C and D are all about the C, as in the ocean. Uh, each one of them, though, has a different purpose, a different author, a different target audience, a different style of, of language that's been used. Again, some strategies that you or students can use uh, to figure out, first and foremost, 
what works best for each individual student because there is no one size fits all, especially with gifted and talented students. I mean, um, in one class, OC class, there may be a, a very wide range of different learning styles and all are considered gifted and talented, but perhaps none are exactly the same or even remotely the same. Uh, so the same thing happens when approaching the test. And I suppose this is why practice tests are so uh, beneficial because it gives you a chance to be able to experiment with your style, like which style uh, you best uh, mesh with. One, one approach can be to read the uh, clues first and then go into the texts or vice versa. Look at the text, skim and scan them the same way we would for any text. Look for the keywords, uh, ascertain the target audience or the purpose in a very quick manner. Like this is a skill that you develop slowly, but uh, means as you become more and more precise, the time that it takes you to do that is, you know, it can get down to, well, a matter of seconds, actually. Especially as students move through, um, you know, to year six or, or into a selective, not even any, any test in high school. Uh, now, the next question is always, well, how do I practice these skills? Now, yeah. Doing practice tests is vital, but just repeating the same mistakes that you're making um, over and over doesn't equal any progress at all, does it? So being able to identify which skills you have, what strengths you have, work on those, and then also what weaknesses you have, work on those. That means that we can see progression throughout the practice test. You can't just rely on luck of turning up and hoping that you get a test that suits you or topics that you understand and know about already. This is not a, a good strategy to take forward in life. It, it, uh, it's much better if you have tools and strategies, ideas of exactly how you can answer these questions. Yes, in the OC test, yes, in the selective test, but also just in life in general, at school every day. In, in your life outside of school, one day in your other studies or, um, you know, career. These are life skills that you are learning as well. Okay, for the next few minutes, I'm going to talk about the types of reading comprehension questions. So this is back to the list that I showed you at the beginning. And I've just got a little bit of a summary of each type of question and how you can identify the type of question and how or what type of thinking you then apply to that type of question. So firstly, let's look at the main idea. Fairly self-explanatory, isn't it? it? Tells us what the passage is about. This applies to multiple matching. It applies to gap text. It applies to all sections of the reading comprehension test in this and also outside um, of the test in your daily education. Uh, I'm not going to read all of these points out to you. You can read or look at them yourself. I'll just uh, focus your attention on some of the most important points. The last stop point, when answering a question about main idea, you're asking yourself, well, what is this passage really mostly about? And you answer uh, that question. This is also part of the skimming and scanning process. It's when you first ask yourself, what is the point of this text? What is the purpose? Why has it been written? Another type of question that gets asked is the recalling of facts and details. These will be related to the main idea. It's um, going to be something explicit or if you're familiar with the here hidden head type of um, reading strategy, it's the here questions, the facts that are right there in the text. You can put your finger on top of the line and that is the answer. So they are re well they are testing your recall 
that means your ability to remember. If you remember straight away because you've got a great memory, perfect, you've saved time, you know the answer. If you don't or you can't, you're not sure, you've got to go back into the text and check it. This takes time. That's fine. But being able to have signals about, well, what extract did that come from? I know because I know the main idea of this passage. And then you can quickly go to that passage means you save time going back through the whole text over and over and over looking for a fact or a detail. Understanding sequence, this is about how information is put into the right order. Uh, texts are structured in sequence. All texts, I'd say, um, in the test have a beginning, a middle and an end. So that might look like a heading or an introduction. It could have a body paragraph. It could have multiple body paragraphs. It could have a conclusion or, or not, a concluding sentence or not, um, depending on the text type. There will be signal words or sequencing words all throughout text, you know, like firstly, secondly, thirdly, lastly, after that, before, um, simultaneously. You know, this is where the signal words can direct you to understanding the sequence of the text. If there's a question about what comes before or what comes after, then knowing these words and where to look, it's like a little compass that directs you around the text. Cause and effect, again, plenty of signal words that you can practice to be familiar with that show cause and effect. Um, these appear in all types of text. I mean that it could be persuasive, entertaining or informative. Uh, they are often, very often, in relation to informative text where we're seeing like an explanation or a description of how something, um, why something happened or what happened or the reasons why something happened. Next, we have comparing and contrasting. This is a little bit more higher order thinking. So when we're talking about skills, the simple skills of being able to just identify a fact right up to the top um, gifted and talented skills, I suppose, of being able to critically think and create. Well, we're moving up the scale here uh, to comparing and contrasting because it means you need to hold two ideas at once in your mind and then make educated um, decisions about what is similar and what, are dif what is different between them and maybe even go steps further than that as, and to ask why or how. So these uh, types of questions will include some language. There's examples there for you such as uh, this, is this most like or is this different or similar to you see a lot of these in the multiple matching section because it's about paraphrasing. Making predictions. Um, now, we all know what a prediction is. We're predicting something that happens in the future. In this case, we're talking about what's going to happen later in the text. So the question might be uh, about what, what actually does appear in the text later or what might occur in part of the text which is not in the test, you know, like what happens in the next chapter on what might happen after a significant event that has been mentioned. So you're not going to find the answers to these questions in the passage. They are going to be found in your mind. You're going to have to use your, your own thinking skills and then using clues from the passage, you have an educated guess about what happens next. I say guess, but I mean, it's the options. It's always multiple choice the option will be there for you and you'll be able to make an educated decision, I prefer to say, based on the clues and based on your background knowledge of the text. You might even be lucky and have some background knowledge of the topic, but if you don't, what are you going to do? So there needs you need to have a strategy and, and going back, skimming and scanning the text, knowing what the purpose of the text is, understanding the main idea, who um, the target audience is, what the author's purpose is. Knowing all of these skills and being able to use them quickly means you can make predictions. Finding word meanings in context. So I, I talk about having a broad vocabulary. This is not something that you can 
develop in one day or one week or even, you know, in one year, I'm still developing my vocabulary. It's been decades. So the way to understand words in context is to look at them in the whole sentence that they belong in and then also in the whole paragraph that they belong in and in the whole text that they belong in. Uh, often students might jump to a conclusion about a word in context and think, oh, I've seen that word before and, and jump to think what it means. But you do need to go and check how, what what it means in that particular sentence and in that particular text. Uh, you can use the process of elimination when it comes to this. I mean by that trying the different word options that you're given, seeing which one makes the most sense. The or Any practice vocabulary is very beneficial um, for, obviously, I mean, vocabulary is about word meaning, isn't it? Uh, reading a wide variety of texts, which I'll talk about in a moment, also helps to learn those words. Even if you don't learn them off by heart, you're familiar with them. You've got an idea, a sense of what they mean. Next, we have drawing conclusions and making inferences. Again, in our scale of easy through to difficult questions, this is coming up to the top. These are the harder ones. You have to figure it out on your own. You need to be confident in your own thinking and use the clues that the author has given you. It's not going to be explicit. The author is not going to tell you. The question is asking you to think. Uh, questions about drawing conclusions might include keywords like you can tell this is the case because or this is probably true because and then it's up to you to make a leap of faith <laughs> based on your own um, confidence really and the clues that you have been able to extract from the text. Distinguishing between facts and opinion. This one is a little bit more easy, I suppose, because, um, well, we, we should be very familiar with bias, subjective language, opinionated language, things that, you know, use words as listed here, like the most, the best, the nicest, the greatest. These are all opinions and they differ. That's clearly different to facts which might appear as statements or it could even be like statistic information or data that's provided. Identifying the author's purpose, I've talked about this a lot. It's something that you do in the skimming and scanning stage. You use it in every part of the exam. It saves you a lot of time. Uh, understanding the reason behind the text will give you an incredible amount of um, for knowledge to be able to then apply to the questions and that gives you more accuracy and it also saves you time. Figurative language. So sometimes we know that writers use words that are different to their literal meaning. So I'm talking here about metaphors and similes. There are always questions about metaphors and similes i found and I think it's because well, one, they're one of the most beautiful ways of expressing the otherwise unexpressible parts of human um, experience and human condition, which is what English or all literature is, is really essentially about, isn't it? Uh, so being able to think in figurative ways is a talent and it's also a joy. It's something that you will enjoy doing. The more you read and the more you understand, it's fun. It's actually um, a skill that you you can use to then understand and convey difficult and complex ideas, not only in English but outside in all your other KLAs. That, that means key learning areas. And lastly, there are usually questions about summary, like just what was the main point of the passage or the main idea, you know, we've discussed that before. Uh, it could be, though, a summary of a particular stanza in a poem or the summary of one paragraph. It's not necessarily of the whole text. Uh, again, this 
there's always clues in the text about this, the headings, the topic sentences, the, the finishing sentences or the conclusion, but you are going to have to use your own thoughts as well as the clues from the author to make conclusions about that. Uh, briefly, I'll just, my last point really is about the test and time management. We keep talking about time management because it is a test in itself. Being able to regulate the time and um, use it wisely, knowing how much time to give to each section, knowing when to leave something and move on so that you are not, uh, you don't find yourself out of time because you own it over one question or it would have been much more efficient and economical for you to um, highlight that as a thought to come back and keep moving. All of these, all of these things are, are to do with time management. So I've said the first two points. This, the third point there is um, mark the answer that you think is best and then come back later if you have time. Sometimes students finish early and they think this is a good sign. It, I mean, yes, it can be, but you don't get any marks for finishing first, you know, like early before the time. It's not a race. We're not in the Olympics for speed or anything. So you get marks for correct, accurate answers, not finishing first. Um, for this reason, you also shouldn't rush uh, once you've, you know, got your time management skills organised. But if you have any spare time, you must use it to come back because I guarantee you you've made uh, a quick decision that might not be accurate because of the stress and the pressure and the environment of an exam condition. Again, practising tests removes some of that anxiety and stress because you're able to have a much better sense of, of what's happening and, and um, how to predict the next part of the test. Uh, there's no time warnings during the test. You have to check the timer in the window. Like um, now that it will be online, there's a timer on your screen, so that makes that, that job much easier. You're not looking around for a clock, um, figuring out your own how much time you have. It'll be clearly on your screen. So that's one benefit being online. Now, it does say we have a Q&A. David has uh, mentioned that he will be able to answer your questions or we will be able to answer your questions most likely um, after the webinar I think is that right David I'm not sure if we have time to take many questions now or I'll ask you your opinion about that yes yes I will take some time yep. yeah after your presentation so yeah uh, I, I can uh, answer as many questions as possible yeah mm -hmm. until the time permits yes Okay. Um, <laughs> the final, my final point then I just would make is the best way to prepare for the test, for the reading test at least, is to read. And I know that might sound <laughs> very straightforward, but there's there's plenty of evidence and data to evidence uh, that reading improves, you know, literacy in in every way. It's going to improve your vocabulary, your ability to think and understand and become familiar with ideas that are outside of your common experience. I'm speaking to the students here, obviously. Uh, so, you know, that can be looking at a range of texts online or from the library, informative, persuasive and entertaining. Look at poetry and stuff as well. Even on YouTube, there's plenty of poets that have read their poetry out loud which is actually how poetry is intended to be heard in the first instance. So don't be afraid to go and listen to auditory text as well. Um, anything like that is going to help improve reading skills. And then, of course, practising the test, um, well, that is invaluable. It helps to um, yeah, give students all those skills and strategies and, and know how to use them under time constraints and pressures. Yeah. Okay. I think that's me done, David. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you for your, your valuable uh, advice and informative uh, webinar presentation. You're welcome. Thank you for having me.
Thank you. You can go back to the HSC marking. Yes, I'll go back to HSC marking. Okay. Have a Thank nice you. Everyone. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay, parents, uh, yes, we have over 870 parents registered for this webinar. So uh, let me quickly have a look at the, uh, the, some of the questions coming from our audience. Okay, I have just 10 minutes remaining, so I will quickly uh, choose most frequent asked question, maybe around five questions. Okay, first one uh, coming from yeah, David. Uh, how many OC places for each uh, schools? Uh, usually each school uh, will have just one OC, that means 30 places. So most likely 30 places for each OC schools, except some school, like a uh, Hurstville public school will have two classes, that means 60 places available. And Ulara public school and Ataman public school, uh, they have one more uh, classes, OC class, 60 each. All other uh, OC school will cater only 30 year five places available. Yes. Um, so, does anyone know when is the 2021 OC result come out? Uh, this year's OC result will be available in mid January next year, early January next year, due to the uh, COVID pandemic. It has been delayed, and the exam is just finished the last 17th of November. So, now they are quite busy to. Uh, selecting the successful student now and the outcome of the bias will be available from mid-January next year. Okay, and Jayid said, asked, please, how to choose the school where my child will have the testing? Okay. Um, yes, so to get a suitable advice, I need to see your child OCTTC performance. So. You can get a, a advice from me after Tom One OCTTC. Yes. And Connie asked me how many schools I can choose. You will have just two choices. First choice as a target school, and second choice as the backup school. So you have only two choices. Yes. Okay, Shamila said, can you get a copy of the webinar? Uh, this webinar session is recorded. So you may be able to replay entire session uh, within half an hour. So you can just click the same link, webinar link, and it is uh, direct to the uh, replay link. So you can watch it again after this webinar, yes. Okay, and then, um, so will you provide guidance in selecting OC schools based on this performance? Yes, uh, we will give you the advice how to select the OC schools uh, during the application period. That means during April and May, yeah, we will organize the interview with our parents and I will help you to complete your application with the suitable school choices. Yeah, I can recommend, yes. Um, Okay, and how the school score work? Yes, as I mentioned, the schools, there will be school score, which is 20 marks out of 120 that it come from your child's school in English and math performance at the own school environment. And they will give out of 10 marks English and 10 marks in mathematics. And it is combined into the uh, test and exam, exam mark and school mark with combined out of 120, yes. So usually before applying to school mark, uh, there is a process for the scaling, so-called moderation. The school mark will be moderated according to their test performance. So it will be changed to make it uh, fair to uh, apply of both test and uh, school mark together, yes. Um, 
Is it right? No, there is no writing test for the OC. Uh, the selective school exam has 30 minutes writing test, but not for the OC. OC has just a reading, mathematical reasoning, and thinking skills. So three sections or a multiple choice test. Yes. Okay, it's selective exam. Ah, yes. Uh, we have another webinar session next Wednesday. 8th of December, that's focused on selective school exam. So if there are any Yoko parents, uh, I'm more than welcome to join again next week, Wednesday, 5 p.m. Yes. So uh, anybody ask, is selective exam computer-based as well? I think yes. Uh, probably 2020 to selective exam will be the last paper test. And then they will move to the online computer-based test from uh, 2023, yes. Okay. And uh, what about school who, does, who doesn't want to provide the school mark? Yes. There are some school, uh, especially for the Catholic school, independent school, uh, some principal, they don't want to support your OC application. In that case, they will de they may decline to provide the school mark. In that case, uh, still you need to ask them to uh, check your OC application. There is some school principals section, and as long as you can get a signature from the principal, your application will be accepted, and they will only use the exam score. There is no school score in that case, and it will be just 100% school score. Out of 120 mark will come from the exam score, exam performance. Yes. Okay, and okay, last question. Yeah, I think uh, due to the time limit, yes. Uh, what about the school mark? How do they calculate uh, school assessment score? Yes, the school, each school. Uh, it's all the public school should provide students ass school assessment score and they will follow the assessment guideline from the OCE unit, OC and selective school unit. Uh, there is a guideline, but it's, it's totally based on their own uh, assessment criteria. They can use their own uh, standard assessment criteria and they will provide the uh, school mark on their own way, yes. That's why there is some sort of moderation procedure, yeah, to make it equal weight with actual exam performance and the school performance together. Okay, so um, yes, if you have any question, yeah, uh, I provide my email address, which is david at newcollege.com.au. So you can email me anytime and I will try to reply you as well as possible. Okay, so yeah, don't worry about it. So again, uh, we have annual scholar test in 12th of December, and was most important course, which is a summer intensive course that will start from 10th of July, uh, 10th of January, and then we will start term one uh, course uh, together with OCTTC from 22nd of January. So that's the main key days for the remaining schedule. Okay, so thank you very much for joining today's webinar, and I will see you again uh, next year, or probably if you want to find out the selective school exam information, yeah, uh, please join the uh, next uh, Wednesday's webinar, which is focused on selective school exam. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, have a good evening.